Now, this is where I started to get annoyed because I'm like, I would love for you to be shady because if you want me to disrespect you on this phone call in front of all of the family members, please, by all means, go ahead because this can become very rude and disrespectful on this phone call and I know you're not going to like what I have to say. When you have the opportunity to speak, you decide to be a child. So I will, you will be treated as a child. You have to wait on timeout until we decide that we want to talk to you. And that's what has to happen when people want to act like a child, you just treat them like a child. I'm not going to treat you like an adult if you want to act like you're six years old or four years old. I'm going to start pouting and complaining. I'm not dealing with that. Welcome to the Bamboo Project Podcast. I decided I wanted to become a billionaire doing what I already love to do while documenting my journey to get there. I figure I'll make all the mistakes so you don't have to. My name is Donovan Gray and this is how I'll turn my life into a living. First, I want to start off by giving a shout out to the Bamboo Project family. The goal is for me to hit $1 million and then help a thousand of you guys get there. We are currently streaming on all major streaming platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor. You name it, we on it. And if we ain't on it, we about to be on it. For everyone listening to the podcast and not watching it, you can find us on YouTube at The Bamboo Project. We have over 300 videos on our channel. Dr. Sabi inspired cooking tutorials, we got that. Travel lifestyle vlogs, got it. Makeup, got it. Hair growth, got it. Real estate, got it. Basketball, got it. It's everything us. We post something on our story pretty much every day. So you can find me on Instagram at Donovan Gray, D-O-N-I-V-A-N-G-R-A-Y, and my phenomenal, beautiful, amazing girlfriend, Anita Byrne, A-N-E-T-A-B-U-R-N. They said you can't be rich being a jack of all trades. Well, we're going to see if that's true or not. We currently have six different projects. We have the food project, the music project, the clothing project, the fitness project, the Sports Project, and the Bamboo Project Podcast, which you are listening to right now. This may be your first time here, and if it is, welcome to the family. But for everyone else, this is Chapter 2, page 54 of this story. On this podcast, we have four major segments. We have the Life Update. It's a weekly update on what we went through last week. Then we have Episode Playback. It's a recap of last week's episode and things I could have done better in that episode. Then we have Donovan's Questions. That's when I present you a philosophical question I thought about earlier in the week, and I want to see what you guys think about it. And then we have the topics of the day, okay? All video and audio timestamps will be in the description below, and today is March 28th, I believe it is. No, actually, got that wrong. Today is March 30th, and it is 444, okay? So on today's agenda, we, okay, you already know. I'm going to start the life update. However, for our topic of the day, I felt like last week I did not address the topic that I kind of wanted to address. So I'm going to address that this week. And it was about why and how or why girls always take back guys who treat them bad and cheat on them and just do them terrible and why they will always take them back. I mean, I'm obviously fighting for it, you know, against that, but that's pretty much what I want to talk about. So as you can probably see by the title, because listen, this is YouTube and, uh, you know, SEO people click on certain things. So I already know what I was going to title this video and it's probably why you're here. So <sighs> okay, so everybody who has been here for a while now, a couple of months, my, obviously, even if you've been here for the last couple of weeks, then you will know that Melissa and I were planning to move to Atlanta. That's the overarching theme of our life right now is get to Atlanta. That's that's where we're trying to get to, right? All the black people, it's like Wakanda for us or like wherever Simba and his dad used to live. That's where we are trying to get to, right? So I'm trying to figure out how can I get experience in getting Airbnb or corporate housing so I can carry that into Atlanta. Lo and behold, the family building that we've had for probably 20 plus years now that was passed down from my dad's father, my grandfather, one of the apartments is going vacant. So I'm like, oh, this seemed like a perfect opportunity to practice Airbnb. We had talked about it before as far as me, my sister, my cousin, and my aunt, who's the manager of that business or of the building. 
And she at first was like, you know, she was kind of hesitant on it because she felt like it was not very secure as far as how to make money from it. She goes, she, they prefer long term things. They feel like they want security. They're older. That's how they feel like uh, they would rather have a tenant in there who they know is or is supposed to pay every year or every two years, every single month for those two years. Even if you can make more money in three or four months by having somebody there short time and paying more, they want to go with that. It's just a difference of philosophies. Nobody's right. Nobody is wrong. So she's come around and she's like, you know what? It's one unit. Why not? Let's see how it goes. I, you know, She's starting to understand more about the profit, profitability of Airbnb. She's decided that, okay, I think let's test it out. Let's see. So I have a lot of experience. Let me not say experience. I have a lot of knowledge. I've been learning and studying Airbnb. Melissa and I have went down to Atlanta to learn about what the process would even be like. So we've been, we took, a, we paid for a course. So it's like, uh, everything is good. Like every, we've been learning about what we want to do as far as Airbnb goes. So we had to plan, uh, what was it? The expenses. We had to figure out how to find comps and how to get price matching and all types of different things that you need for Airbnb. So I presented this to my family. I said, hey, look, how about to my aunt specifically? I said, hey, how about Melissa? Not Mel- well, yeah, I guess you would still be doing it, too. I guess you would do. Would you be a part of the process if that was to happen? I feel like you. I mean, yeah, definitely. But I don't think that was said. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Melissa and I would have been managing the unit. Right. It would have been our first unit that we ever had. And we would get some experience from it. So I'm like, hey, why not just treat this as if it was a person that we were doing business with in Atlanta as so that we can get the idea of what it's supposed to be like going forward. So I'm like, hey, we'll just we'll cover everything. We'll put up all the money for furniture. We'll put up money to have the apartment painted. We would have we would pay we would pay for the utilities, whether that be Wi-Fi, electricity, water, uh, garbage, things like that. We would, we would cover all of those expenses. We would also pay them rent. The rent right now, I believe, market like two thousand. It might be like twenty one hundred, but they're charging twenty fifty for it. So it's like, okay, we would pay y'all the rent, and then whatever money we keep, whatever money we make on top of that rent, we would keep for ourselves. So that would, and that money that we keep would go to whatever operating expenses we have for the building, right? And I'm a, I, I don't remember whether or not this is how the conversation went. I feel like I presented this idea to her as far as we, Melissa and I, or me, would keep the money on top of whatever we, after we pay off the rent. And the reason I say that I don't remember if I said this or not, because of the conversation that we had yesterday. So when I presented this idea to my aunt, it seemed as though everything was perfectly fine. She was like, okay, sure. She felt like I shouldn't pay $7,000 for furniture. It's high because it's a one bedroom, one bathroom, but that was the budget that we had for Atlanta. So I figured why not just apply that same budget to this unit. Any money that we keep, we can just actually, you know, buy something else with it or whatever the case might be. So she wants to run it by the rest of the family. That, that'd be Hadassah, which is my cousin who's been on the podcast right here. We have my sister. We have my two uncles and her are all a part of the business. My cousin is not necessarily part of the business on paper, but she does obviously is part of the family. So she is involved in the business. So we all got a group call yesterday, right? So now I present this idea to them and I say, hey, I think that or I would like to just take over the uh, the unit myself. I would pay you guys the rent that you guys would already be getting and I would keep everything else, right? This is where everything started to go left. And I don't really know why it started to go left because I was under the assumption that this was already agreed upon between my aunt and I and everything would be fine. You guys want to have a tenant. You guys have been having a tenant for the, the past couple of years, not a couple of years, but for the last decade or two decades. So why all of a sudden become an issue? I'm still paying you the same rent and I'm covering utilities, which most, well, yeah, I'm covering utilities and I'm paying the rent and I'm doing maintenance for the building, for the apartment, because I'm the one renting it out and I'm making money from it. So I'm trying to save them as much money as possible while also giving them money. They didn't like that. They felt like if I'm making money off the building, everybody should be getting money off the building, right? Now, I don't know how you guys feel about that. That phrase, you might feel like, okay, Donovan, it's a family business. Everybody should be benefiting from the building. And I would agree with that. 
if currently anybody in the family was benefiting off of the building. But currently, no one is benefiting off of the building. According to my aunt and the family, all of the units, all the money that is made from the building goes into an account to cover the building's expenses. So nobody profits from the building. No money comes out to pay anybody. Nobody uses the, the building to host any party. Nobody's making any money from the building. It's just there. It's collecting rent and it's paying off the mortgage that is owed and whatever lawsuits or construction or renovation needs to happen. That's what it's paying for, right? So you can understand why I would be surprised that when I decide to come in and make money off of a unit and try to the word is not optimized, but I'm going to say to optimize the unit to make more money. Now it's that's not we we need you to split that money with the building. So I'm like, OK, I don't really understand that. I don't get the reason she was saying they were saying that it's family. This was the overarching theme of this conversation is that Donovan, this is or Niles, what they call me on that side. This is a family. We are a family. And anything that profits from the business or from the unit should go to the family. And I'm like, this sounds very weird to me. I'm like, this sounds like something you see in like Tyler Perry movies or one of those Netflix shows where there's like that. Honestly, even all the Disney Snow White movies where they're like, no, 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 we 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 know she's a princess, but you have to bring us along with her because we we are her sisters and we should also get the stuff that she gets, even though you don't want us. You just want her we feel like we should get that. And that's how I felt in that conversation. I'm like, I don't understand why you guys want more of the money that I be making if you guys are currently getting no money from what is being making or being made. So I don't understand that. So then it was presented that by my sister that there is an unlimited earning potential on the building, right? Now, I'm like, at first, I didn't pick up on this. I, le- I thought about this afterwards, right? Melissa and I had the conversation and I was like, yeah, that doesn't really make any sense because unlimited earning potential is not true, but it's one of those trigger words that you can say to make people feel like that they're missing out on something and you're gaining more than they're getting because every unit for Airbnb has a limited potential of what you can make on it. You're not making $30,000 a month on this unit. You have to go by what the unit is worth, how much you can get in that area, what's happening at the time. But she kept saying that there's an unlimited earning potential. So my issue with what was being said is that they were saying that they want to know how much money I make from the Airbnb and they want to get a cut out of the money I make from the Airbnb. Now, again, you may think that that sounds reasonable. Okay, here's my dilemma with that. If I am paying rent of two thousand dollars, right, let's say that the unit in that area, you might get four thousand, maybe five thousand dollars on that unit. A month that's what i'm assuming right they're putting up zero dollars right i'm paying for utilities i'm paying for wi-fi water maintenance i'm paying for furniture i'm paying for staging i'm paying to get the house the apartment painted and i am managing the day-to-day operations of the airbnb of the unit as well as trying to price match and figure out or scaling the price to figure out okay on Tuesdays, it should be, you know, $100 less because it's, you know, a, a holiday or it's an event. But Friday, it should be $100, $200 more because it's the weekend and, you know, something big just happened. Okay, that has to be managed. Somebody has to manage that. You have to also figure out, okay, you want your your title, same thing as YouTube, same thing as Instagram or any, or any other social media site. You want to make sure that your titles are captivating. So somebody has to manage that. These are things that I have planned to manage because, hey, it's our first Airbnb. Why not get the experience? They want me to do all of those things while they do absolutely nothing. Zero. Zero. They want me to pay rent to the unit, right? And give them money from it, right? So I'm like, I'm like, all right. So what, what would you say is a good amount? Because I'm trying to figure out. I'm, I'm, in my head, I'm thinking the better I do, the more money I would make. Right. And they kept putting it as this. They kept phrasing it like we want we feel like the, the money that you make, you you're making all this money. You should put it back into the building. It should go into an account for the building. And I'm like, that's what the rent is doing. The rent, the two thousand dollars a month is going to pay in the mortgage that you were getting before that you were paying before and is going into an account that it was going into before. But now you want me to pay additional money. So I'm like, OK. What kind of numbers are we talking about? Like, what are we what are we figuring out here? 
They're like, well, we don't know how much money we want from the building, from the unit, because we don't have any numbers. So the amount of money that we want depends on how much money you're making. And I'm like, that sounds crazy. I'm like, so you're telling me there's not a set percentage that you want. You need to know how much money that I'm making so that you can then decide on how much money that you want to take from what I'm making. So I gave a hypothetical, right? I said, okay, what about this? I said, what if I do, what if we do $4,000 a month for rent, right? I mean, for the, for the Airbnb in one month. Do you think that it would be too much for me to get $2,000? Oh my God, Donovan, you want $2,000? That's, yes, absolutely, that's crazy. So I'm like, so y'all want me to put up the money, manage the unit, manage the people, worry about security, and pay you the, 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 the rent, but $2,000 on top of that is too much. So what that goes to tell me is that, one, they just want more money. That's the first thing. Two, if, what, if the build, what if the unit made $10,000? So what, how do we figure out how much I should be paid? Because if $2,000 is too much, that means that, that if you break it down to, buy, to every week, $2,000 a week would be $500. $2,000 a month is $500 a week. They're telling me that they, they would not pay me $500 a week to manage the Airbnb or manage the unit, right? So now I'm trying to figure out, okay, what amount of money do they think is reasonable? They don't, the 500 is not reasonable. So I'm like, do you guys want extra money on top of the rent? Would that be good? They're like, well, we can't really tell you that because we don't know how much money we want on top of the rent. We don't want to give you a number. This is what my sister is saying, because what if, what if you are paying $3,000 a month in rent, but you making $9,000? That's not fair. And I'm like, how is that not fair if y'all are not doing anything? If you guys are doing absolutely nothing how is it fair that you should benefit off of that? Now, not benefit, not, we're, we're excluding me paying rent. We're talking about they want to benefit on top of me paying rent. So I'm paying $2,000 a month. Then they also want a percentage of what I'm making. And it doesn't have, the, the amount they want is not based off of, hey, we think we 10%, 20%. It's no, 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 no. We need to make a large amount of money from the money that you are making from this unit. So you can see why I'm a, I'm a little agitated, right? Because I felt like they were, they were pushing this family, family, family situation. And it was coming off to me as being greedy because I think for some reason, the fact that I would be making money off of the unit and nobody else would is a problem. Even though nobody was making money before, so they don't want me to make money off of it, even though they're still getting the same amount of money they would be getting if a tenant was there. Honestly, they're getting less benefits with a tenant being there. So I presented another idea. I said, hey, what if I was to, you know, maybe, like I said, pick up a bunch of dollars a month in rent. I'll pay $2,500 a month. If the rent right now is $2,000, $2,500, again, an issue because the quote, unlimited earning potential, because I know, these are quotes, I know how much, how lucrative the business is. So the fact that I would position myself to pay more up front is the only reason I'm doing that is because I know I would make more money on the back end. And I'm like, you guys are telling me that, this is another thing they kept telling me, we need to have, we need, the reason why we want to take the money from you is because we need a cushion for the business. The business needs a cushion. And I'm like, what kind of cushion do you think I'm about to provide from an extra $2,000 a month in rent? Like, what are you, because are you saying that I should give the building an extra $1,500 a month in rent? So I should make, five, so I should pay $2,000, right, for, out of the four. Then the $1,500 should go to the building for a cushion a month. And I should get $500 a month from the unit. That's $125 a week for me to do, after I put up, Five to seven thousand dollars, and I'm managing it every day. I should get, or every, however long, however much I have to manage it, I should get one hundred twenty-five dollars a week to do that. I'm like, I'm not doing. I'm like, no, that's ridiculous. That's, that's insanity. So then, there are two things about this conversation that stuck out to me, very that that are really sitting on my on my chest, very heavy. The first thing is that during this conversation, it it was it was said by my sister that. 
or let me say, let me, she was alluding to the fact that the only reason that I wanted to do this is because I need the money. I need the money. And that is why I'm doing Airbnb, right? She alluded to this by saying that, I quote, I have a career. Hadassah, your cousin, is about to have a career who's in law school. I mean, and you know, I don't want to be shady, Niles. I'm not trying to be shady. You know, I don't want to be shady. Now, I'm now this is where I started to get annoyed because I'm like, I would love for you to be shady because if you want me to disrespect you on this phone call in front of all of the family members, please, by all means, go ahead because this can become very rude and disrespectful on this phone call and I know you're not going to like what I have to say because this is my problem that I have with her specifically where it's like, I believe that between actually between her and my cousin, they feel like their career is who they are and that's what makes them. And they hold on to that as if it's a big feat. Me, here's my thing. I'm not going to say anything. If that's how you feel about something, by all means, I'm not going to say nothing. Until you try to use that against me, now I'm going to disrespect you. Because now, everybody was fine. If you feel like you you work very hard for your career and you feel like you put a lot of work in for it, then I, I listen, I understand that. But what you're not going to do is you're not going to come and tell me that you, because you have a career, you are in any way better or in a better position than me. Now, the reason I say that is because as a human being, I far outweigh both of them as human beings, whether it be on an emotional level, because I know both of them emotionally, they don't listen emotionally. They're not there intellectually. I'm going to be honest. I thought growing up, I'm like, you know what? These people are very, very smart. This is when I was like 14, maybe 15. But as I got older, I started realizing yeah, this is th- th- there's a gap that's guy enclosed just by me reading, me having experience that they don't have. The fact of the matter is that I believe that the majority of that side of the family suffers from privilege. That means that they were given everything that they have. My sister, her car, I think her car was bought by her mom. She lives with her mom. Her mom pays for most of the stuff that she has. My cousin, same situation, pay everything paid for. And, and as far as I know, they don't even have any real life experiences that this like, wow, that was that was really traumatized. That was crazy. So they go through life and they just ex- and feel entitled to things. And that's the vibe I was getting from this conversation is like, well, I feel like I should have that because you're going to make money and I'm not going to make money. And I don't think that's fair, Niles. I think that if you should make money, I should make money too. Now, I don't want to put no work up. I'm not, because here's the thing. Here's the funny part about all of this, right? If I say to any of these people in this conversation, you know what? I don't think I want to do this anymore, right? If I say hi, I think it's too much of a headache. It's too much work. It's just not worth me doing it. I can guarantee you nobody is doing it. No, there will be no Airbnb because my uncles don't even, they don't even deal with the, with the building at all. They're like, yo, it's there, whatever. I, one of them is in another state across the country. The other one is in the other borough. He's like, whatever. I don't, he does his own thing. He don't care about the building. My aunt is the manager of the building. She is older. She's not going to be managing the Airbnb. She even said, she's like, I'm not trying to do, I'm, she said, I, she said, I am not doing that. So that's three people out of it already. Okay. So you know what's left is me, my cousin, and my sister to manage it. My cousin is in Philadelphia. Do you think that she's going to be driving over here while she's in law school to manage the unit? She's not going to do that. She's, she's not going to do that. My other, now, now at least me and my sister, she's the one that feels like she would be part of the, of the Airbnb. Do you, she is very bougie. She is not going to be driving and dealing with people, whether it have to be on She's a teacher. She has to write homework. She has to do tests. She has to create tests, grade tests. She's doing things as a teacher. So she knows that she is not going to be dealing with the day-to-day stuff of every unit. What she will do is she will put up some money in the beginning and go, all right, put my money, I put the money up. I'm done with it. You manage everything else. If you, you know, maybe you could call me. I'll, I'll look up some stuff for you and I'll get you that back. And then that's pretty much it. So if I'm not going to do it and she has to do it by herself, 100% by herself, she will also not do it. She will only do it if I'm doing it. I am the only person that is saying I will do it by myself. Don't have to worry about nobody. Listen, just let me, I will pay you whatever you want to get paid as far as the rent goes. And then everything else that I do, because nobody else is going to do it, I will take that money. 
nah, that's that they're not okay with that. So during this phone call, like I said earlier, right? She kept becoming being very shady to, or, or trying to be shady. And I've talked about this on the podcast before, where I've said that I have a certain stigma among my family, right? I'm very aware of the stigma. If I had to guess, there are conversations being had that I'm not a part of. So when I actually talk to them and I am now fighting against whatever they think about me, as opposed to whatever is being said at, in that conversation, right? Melissa heard the conversation and she was asking me like, why did they feel me talk to you like that? And I'm like, they, it's my experience growing up from from growing up to now, I've been in trouble. I've been suspended from school, uh, expelled from schools. I've been in jail for, I don't really want to say in jail because it's like, I feel like y'all think it was like prison or something like that. But I definitely, uh, I got into a fight with the police because I ran a light on my bicycle and then they, I, did, I didn't give them my ID. So they called in a bunch of backup for me because I didn't give them my ID for running a light on my bicycle. And then they arrested me and brought me to jail. I had to stay there for like two nights in jail in Manhattan, right? That's one time. In college, I had a girl lie on me and then tell people that I beat her up. And then I had to go to jail again for that. And I was only in there for like a day until I posted bail or whatever the case might be. It might even be a couple of hours. Um, so that's, when I, that's what I mean by when I say I went to jail. I was not like, oh, I did two, three years. No, it was nothing like that. But that stigma follows me. I'm a college dropout, so I'm not in school. I was riding a bike. So this is not a career as she has mentioned. So you put all these things together and it equals out to people feeling like they can disrespect me. Now, what happens with that is that when we actually are talking face to face, that doesn't work because I'm not stupid and they feel like I am. So they talk to me and they'll go. It, it always ends up with a situation where I even give an example from that conversation. They will present a problem to me. I'll present a solution for it. And it, it's like they have a cognitive dissonance where it's like you can't be saying things that make sense because you did not go through. You did not go to college. You did not go to a college that I went to. You are not. You don't have a career. Your life is not the way it's supposed to be. How is it that you're able to make sense and take things that make sense to me and disprove what I'm saying? This is one reason why I personally am not a, a, a fan of school or college. I'm a fan of learning. The reason that is, is because people go to college and feel like, well, I have a degree. I'm smart. I'm a teacher. I'm smart. I'm a lawyer. I'm smart. I'm a doctor. I'm smart. Those things don't make you smart. There are there are so many people who are in those professions who are stupid. All you have to do for those professions is follow the, the path that they laid out for you, pass your test, and you are a doctor. There are so many doc. Listen, there are lawyers all over the all over the country. There are lawyers everywhere. There are teachers everywhere. And if we're really talking about, if we really want to bring up teachers because she's a teacher, do you know how many dumb teachers there are? You know how many teachers, pe- think about this as a, as a student anywhere, right? Have you ever had a teacher and you're like, yo, how did you become a teacher? Like, wh- how did this happen? Like, why are you, you, you 24 and you a teacher? I remember I had a teacher one time, I had a teacher in, uh, in middle, in high school. She used to come into class crying about her boyfriend. In class, he would sit at the desk and cry and put, my, this is high school. I'm, a, I'm a, a, a junior or senior in college. I'm sitting in class where she's crying about her boyfriend who cheated on her and we're watching a movie because she's crying. What kind of teacher is that? So, but, it's, but, if she, but she would be able to say, I have a career. I'm a teacher. But then when you sit down and actually open up the book and go, wait a minute, and you look at her and you're like, but you don't know how to handle yourself at school. Like what, how, what kind of teacher... Being a teacher does not equate to anything other than the fact that you are a teacher. That's all that means. And the reason I'm saying this is because I always advocate for people becoming great people. Be a great individual person. If you have insecurities, work on them. If you have things that you're afraid of, work on that. You have you want to be in shape, go to the gym. You want to learn how to speak better. You want to learn how to read. Do those things. Those That is what makes you a great person. But for somebody to assume or allude or insinuate that you're a great person because of where you work at is ridiculous. It makes no sense. And it, like I said, I, you could probably could tell I'm annoyed by this because the reason I'm annoyed is because what she did in that situation was she brought it up and didn't say nothing about it. Because I'm like, listen, she's over 30 years old and she's talking about some, you know, now I could be shady. I don't want to have to be shady. And I'm like, how old are you? If you have something that you feel like you want to say, then say what you have to say. Don't just put it out there like, well, you know, I would say something, but I'm not going to. I would want her to say something, but she never did. And this is my problem. It's, it's like a threat. 
Don't threaten me. If you have something to say, I would love to go head to head with you talking to me about anything in life. I would love to do that. So that's, that was her, right? I'm going to come back to that later. Then you have my cousin. So during the conversation, y'all have already heard, y'all seen her on the podcast before. Y'all know how I feel about what she's going through with the guy that she's talking to or was talking to, right? I have broken it down. I have talked to her about it over and over and over again. I've explained to her in, in layman's terms. I've explained to her hypothetically. I've explained to her on different occasions on how to deal with certain things, right? One of the issues that she has is that she's a toxic person. Now, I don't think she knows she's toxic. Maybe she does. Maybe she doesn't. However, like I said before, these are things that I have studied. I made, I have went through the ringer to learn how to deal with this kind of stuff. I spent years like, okay, I, it, and when I, when I say I spent years, I don't mean I just read books. I'm like, okay, this is what the book says. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to try this because this doesn't make any sense. You're trying to tell me that people psychologically work like this is how the brain, I don't, this doesn't make any sense. You're telling me innately, just off of, from, from ye, thousands of years of evolution, this is how people be, uh, behave? Nah, I don't believe that. So I went outside and I tested it and I'm like, wow, this is, this is crazy, right? So, but like I said, there's no, if you don't, according to them, if I don't have a career in, uh, what is that? What is that? What is that field called? Um, not sociology. What's the other one? Psychology. Nah, it's another one. It's the, it's the, the, the study of like people and the environment. That is sociology. That's sociology? I believe so. I thought there was another one. Of like the environment, I thought there was another, like city and stuff. But either way, sociology is the study of development, structure, and functioning of the human society. Okay, so then right, that's what it is, right? So, excuse me. So, the reason I'm bringing this up is because during a phone call, right? This is this is these are the childish things that we're talking about when somebody wants to tell you, "Oh, I'm a lawyer." I'm a, you know, I'm in law school, right? You know, I'm a, I'm a doctor, right? You know, I'm a teacher, right? I'm like, okay, sure. Then why are you on the phone doing this little, this is a child's trick. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you guys a trick because I'm a, I'm pretty sure I guarantee that a lot of people do it. Either they know they're doing, they probably know on a innate level as far as feeling it, but a lot of people probably do it because they're being manipulative, right? Here's what it is. We're having a conversation. She's saying that, oh, you should put Five, you should put a money towards the the building. You should put money towards the building as far as the cushion goes, right? She is echoing what everybody else is saying. She's not she's not actually thinking about what she's saying. She's like, oh, she's the youngest of everybody. She's think she's twenty four, I think, or twenty three. She is just saying, oh, well, they're saying that. I'm gonna say what they're saying without any reason behind or any logic behind what she's saying. So I'm like, okay, fine. Like I said earlier, if I have to confront you on a logic level on what if you're saying makes sense, you're probably going to lose, especially if you don't put in the work. Just because you have a career does not mean that if you have to have a conversation with me, that when we have that conversation, that you're going to feel like, you know what? Damn, that he really don't know what he's talking about. That's probably not going to happen if we're having a conversation. So she is trying this trick. I, I don't even know what I would call it. It's, it's childish. She's presenting her, her problem. Or the fact that I should pay uh, a cushion for the rent. And I'm like, okay, so hypothetically speaking, how much money are we talking about here? What are we, what are we saying? Uh, $300, $500 extra? What are we talking about? She's like, yeah, that's that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right. So you're telling me that you want me, that your, your problem that you have, because I'm only talking to her specifically because the reason why I'm talking to her specifically is because she did not come up with the idea. She just echoing what everybody else said. So I'm like, okay, Hadassah, let me ask you this. If I pay extra $500 a month, that's a hundred, that's $125 a week. What is that going towards? A lawsuit? Is that going to renovate the house? You want an extra $125 a week for what? What is that going to do? She doesn't have any solution. No, no answer for that. I just, I just, N- Niles, and this is, this is more of the toxic stuff. They don't have a response. So they try to make it an emotional conversation. I just can't believe that you don't want to support the family. I can't believe that you're not, you're thinking about yourself. I feel like you're being selfish. You're being greedy. I don't understand. And I'm like, you're not answering my question. My question was, if I was to pay $125 extra a week, is that enough for you to feel like it's good enough for a lawsuit or any other problems or a cushion? A cushion for a $2 million property is $125 a week. And for what? For what? I don't know, I don't know what it would be a cushion for, right? 
she goes, and this is this is the line that everybody always says. You know what? I don't talk about this no more. Obviously, you're not going to listen to me. I don't want to talk about this, right? So immediately, immediately in my chest, I got heated because I'm like, oh, we going to childish games? We going to childish toxic games? I'm toxic game. I'm like, do you know? Like, you... Like, do you know where I come from with this kind of stuff? So I'm looking, I'm just looking at the phone, I'm right? We're on, on a group FaceTime call. And I'm like, I'm like, okay. I'm like, you don't know that, like, I'm like, you don't know I've dealt with this so much already. I go, okay, fine. And for people listening, this is how you respond to people who do this nonsense. You just go, okay, fine. You just, you, you go, you, 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 you don't talk about it no more? Okay. And you, you leave it alone, right? The reason you do that is because they are not having a logical conversation with you no more because they cannot disprove what you're saying. So now they have to resort to being to attacks on your character because they go, hmm, what you're saying does make sense. And I feel like I'm wrong. So I need to make sure that you look like you're wrong. So I'm going to call you names. I'm going to say that you're shady. I'm going to call you that you're greedy. I'm going to say that you're selfish because I can't prove you wrong, but I can make you look bad. I can do that. So here's what I do. Okay. It's easy to beat that kind of nonsense. I go, fine, I understand. And this is how we got to that point anyways. I'm going to give a little context to that. During the whole conversation, like I said, people just kept calling me selfish throughout the thing. So I said, okay, obviously there's a disconnect on what people want out of this conversation. So let me ask you guys, Hadassah and Jasmine, what are you guys' problems that you have so that I can solve them? Because obviously... There's some, there's a, you want something that I'm obviously not providing. So what is it that you want that I can solve? That's when Hadassah told me that she said she wants, she feels like I'm being selfish and I should provide a cushion. And that's when my, uh, her, my, uh, my sister said, I don't even know what she said. What did she say? What was her reason? Do you remember what she said? She said... Yeah, that I mean that was one of the problems. I don't know if that was her initial problem or her problem when I asked, but that's one of her problems too, is that she feels like I'm trying to run a business inside of it, which is I'm gonna come to that too. This is it's fucking ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And the reason I say it's ridiculous is because I have an issue with people who say that what their problem is, but it's not their actual problem. Because when I solve that problem, magically another problem pops up. And you're like, where if this is your problem, why did you say this first? And then you solve the second problem and they go, Well, I have a third problem, and it's like what is the actual problem? Because as long as you're making up problems, there's going to always be problems because the real problem is not being solved. So I asked, what is the problem that you guys have that you feel like is not being answered or absolved or solved right now? What is that problem? So going back to my cousin, she said what she said as far as, you know what, Niles, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk about this because you're not listening. You don't, you don't listen to what I'm saying. And this conversation is not going to go anywhere. It's all of this childish stuff. And she goes, so I, like I said, I, I go, fine. The reason I say this is because it's an emotional and a power thing. Because I know for a fact that once I go, okay, fine, I won't talk to you anymore, she's going to go, well, I just feel like, and I think, and I, it's not fair. And I, but I'm like, then you should have said that when you were when we were having an adult conversation. You should say those things to me. Hey, this is what I feel like, Niles, and I think I don't have a problem with A, B, and C. And I go, you know what? I hear what you're saying. I don't agree with A. I understand you on B and C. We can solve and figure something out on C. I that's what, that's what adults do. Adults don't try and attack your character because they feel like they're wrong. That's not what adults do. That's not how adults act. So I said, fine, leave it alone. I said, Jasmine, since you are the only person left as far as who wants to have this conversation, as far as who has a problem that is not solved yet, what is your problem? So now we're talking. Me and her, it's a it's a it's an adult conversation at this point. She's saying, Niles, I think this, I feel I think she was saying that she feels like I went around her. And, ja- and, and Hadassah to do the Airbnb myself. That's one of the problems. The other problem is that she feels as though, um, she feels as though, like, like Jasmine, like uh, Melissa said, that I'm trying, I'm trying to further the Bamboo Project business by uh, doing this, right? So I'm like, okay, these are legitimate problems. And I can, I can face them and go, okay, let's, sit, let's have this conversation. 
as far as me going around them and having this conversation with my aunt, I don't necessarily feel like that's what I was doing. However, I can fully understand why she would feel like that. We had a conversation about uh, possibly doing an Airbnb. I don't really remember the context of it, but we had a conversation about that. So I'm like, okay, fine. I think that I understand what you're saying and we could do, we could figure something out about that. We could figure out, okay, how will we break up the, the job for Airbnb? If you want to be a part of it, then that's, I have no problem with that. But then we have to figure out, okay, who's, who's going to delegate what, who's going to be doing what in this? And I don't want to split where it's like, okay, she'll put up some money and then I just do all the work because Airbnb is a front end heavy business. As far as capital goes, you don't have to use much money going forward. So because she has a career for uh, several years, she has money saved up. So she's like, okay, I could give you, you know, $5,000. That's nothing for me. And then she would just be absolved and be like, hey, and that's it. And then I have to do all the legwork. I'm like, I don't really like that. That's not really what I don't really, I'm not fond of that. So, so we didn't really get to that point, right? So then uh, the other thing was the business within the business. I think that that's a ridiculous thing to say. I feel like if I have a business and this can be an opportunity for the business, why would I not use that or utilize that opportunity? And with that being said, that's not even what really happened because my aunt had asked me to, uh, she wanted me to put it in my name. So I'm like, uh, I think the, the, the utility or something like that. So I'm like, why would I not put in my business's name if I'm going to run a business just like this? And we need a uh, history for this exact business. Why would I not just say, hey, let me write the bamboo project on the, on the lease or the utility thing, excuse me, instead of my name. It just makes sense. But like I said, I felt like there are certain things that were not, that was not the actual reason. So as I'm talking to her about this, we're having, in the comments, we're having a conversation. I'm not opposed to having a conversation. I can say, you know what? I was wrong for that. I agree with what you're saying. Let's come to a solution. I get that, right? As I'm talking to her and as we are having adult conversations, here you hear behind me is, I just feel like I don't think that you should. And I don't understand why you don't want to do. And I'm like, why are you talking? I'm like, don't say nothing because this is, and this is what I say about this whole dealing with toxicity stuff. I've done this hundreds of times. I'm like, no, 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 don't talk now because when you had the opportunity to talk and you wanted to have it, you didn't want to say anything. You know why you don't want to say anything? Because you didn't, you honestly don't even care. It's all about, I need to make you look bad. So if once I say, you know what, fine, that's it. You, you don't, you like, nah, nah, I didn't win. I need to feel like I won. He just, he said that and he's not, he's not arguing with me because this is what she wants. This is what she would have wanted, right? She would have wanted me. And this is for all toxic people out there who do this. She would, or who are, who are dealing with this. She would have wanted me to say, no, no, it's not done. Why is it done? No, don't do that. So she can sit there and put on her high horse and be like, no, no, I just think that you just don't listen. And I don't want to talk about this no more. I would, I, and I think that you shouldn't talk about this anymore. I think it should be over. I don't know why you're screaming, which is what she tried also later, right? During this conversation, it is a Zoom, more or less a Zoom call. It's a group FaceTime, right? Anybody that is, has been on a group FaceTime knows it is, people get cut off while they're talking all the time. That's just how the nature of it goes because you can't tell when somebody's finished talking. You think you want to talk. You're not sure. That happens. As well as people also cutting each other off. There is a common standard of, you know what? Yes, I'm talking, but if you have something to say, I'll let you cut me off because I'm, I was pretty much finished talking. And is your, you want to talk, go ahead. That's the thing that happens. There's also the you know option C or the third option where it's like, no, no, no. Someone is being disrespectful and they're cutting you off because they're being disrespectful. She feels like now when, we're, now when I'm talking to her, now it's, now it's just you, you cutting me off. Why are you cutting me off? Don't cut me off when I'm talking. And I'm like, you've been cutting people off this whole conversation. I've been cutting people off this whole conversation. People have cut you off. Why are you trying to single me out as the only person in this whole conversation that is cutting people off? And again, this goes back to whatever, one, there is a stigma around me. And two, it's about making me either fit into that stigma or making me look a certain kind of way in this conversation. So... When she starts yapping on the, in, in the background, I'm like, nah, 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 nah. Don't say nothing. Don't talk. 
Don't nobody want to hear you because when we when I gave the opportunity to speak and to have the conversation like an adult, you chose to take the childish route and pull that toxic nonsense bullshit. So I'm like, okay, how about this? How about you don't say nothing and I'll talk to Jasmine? That's not fair. No, no, no. Stop talking because I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to talk to you. If you want to do this, now you're going to have to wait until later. Because when, like I said six times, when you have the opportunity to speak, you decide to be a child. So I will, you will be treated as a child. You have to wait on time out until we decide that we want to talk to you. And that's what has to happen when people want to act like a child. You treat them like a child. I'm not gonna treat you like an adult if you want to act like you're six years old or four years old. I'm gonna start pouting and complaining. I'm not dealing with that. So. This is how a lot of the conversation was going. It was pretty, like I said, pretty much it's them trying to make me seem like I'm being greedy and being selfish. My uncle, who again, I don't even have a relationship with really, if we be completely honest, as far as the side of family goes, I don't even really have a relationship with them. What I have is I'm like, okay, my uncle was in another state, never talked to him. Like once a year, and I'm honestly that's pushing it. Once every four or five years, I'm 20. I'm 26. I mean, we talked like six times in my life. Maybe I'm going to say in my whole life, we probably talk 10 times. I'm 26 years old. Do the math. That's once every other year. Maybe. And, we not, and, that's, and that's because maybe when I was young, he would come to the house. We might talk because he was in the house. And that's two or three times in one year. But I can guarantee you we go five years without talking, six years without talking. And then if we do talk, it's never no conversation. So I say that to say we don't really talk. My aunt, we haven't really talked since my dad passed. So we don't, we talk now more so before that we didn't have no relationship we didn't really talk my sister another situation i don't talk to her either we don't really talk we started talking more recently and this be it's, this is what blows my mind because i'm like yo she was positioning she was positioning herself as oh this is for the family this is for the family and i'm like yo you don't care about the family i'm like it's so crazy that all of a sudden now that i'm gonna make some money it's the family comes first. I'm like, since when is the family come first? Because ain't nobody helping me do anything. It's, if you was, bro, other than, I mean, let me, let me rephrase that because, and this is, this is an issue in it, within itself, but uh, because it's, I don't even know if I can even say this or not. Cause I'm like, I can't even really tell. Let me, let me know if you, if you, would you consider what she's doing for the building helping what? with the operating agreement? Okay, so here's what I here's why I'm not sure because it's like very nuanced, right? I mean, it's it's okay because I feel like I know what you're gonna say. Because mm-hmm. like either you own it. Exactly. So it's yours. So that's why I'm like, is it really? So this is what happened, right? Since my dad passed last year, uh, he owned twenty five percent of. He owns 25% of the company that owns the building in Harlem, right? So when he passed, his estate comes is passed down to me and my sister. We split that 25% down the middle. It's 12.5%. So technically, I own 12.5% of the business. So because I'm like, hey, I've been studying real estate. Why would I not use my knowledge to benefit in my own life? If somebody gives me a, a percentage of a building and I'm doing real estate and that could help me, why not use that? That's how I looked at it, right? So to get the hard money loan, I'm like, hey, if I say that I own 12% of this business, they'll give me a better rate for the business. So that's what I did. They wanted an operating agreement, which is pretty much people who do not have a business that just pretty much states, you know, uh, Melissa's a member. She has 50%. Donovan is a member. He has 50%. You know, then you have, you know, then you have a, I don't know, a finance or whatever. However you want to split it up, that's pretty much what the operating agreement says. It can be lengthier. Obviously, you have a bigger company and there's more things involved. That's how that would go. So they want to say, okay, we need to we need to prove to us that you actually own part of this business. I'm like, okay. I go to her and I say, hey, can I can I get uh, the operating agreement for the for the company? No, I said, yeah, I said, can I get the operating agreement for the business? She's like, oh, you're not on the, you're not on it. I'm like, okay, well, can I just get it changed so that I am on it? Because I do own the 12%, 12.5%. She said, fine. So I go, uh, I call LegalZoom up. I'm like, hey, can I, you know, how much does this cost? Oh, if you want to get it expedited, it's $300. I'm like, bet, I'll cover the bill. Go back to her. She's like, all right, cool. Let's do it, right? 
She goes, I want to call a lawyer first to do it, right? This is very reminiscent of the, how the family goes, by the way. It's very like untrustworthy type of stuff. It could just be with me. I don't know. It could be a me thing because I talked about it on the podcast before where I had asked her for, I asked her for the agent's name for the building and she told me she can't tell me that it's personal. And I'm like, that don't even make sense. Because I'm like, I don't even, like, again, that it makes no sense to me. You want to hear that's an old podcast. So I'm like, I mean, it's going to be probably, it's going to be a bit long. Cause, so, so then um, we have, uh, where was I saying? What was I saying? Um, operating agreement, right? So she talks to the lawyer and now the lawyer is saying, or according to what, this is what she told me the lawyer said. I don't even know how true this is, right? She told me that the lawyer said because of there's a lawsuit, somebody tripped and fell in front of the building and they're suing, right? And it's just for all the people who are out there who are like, you're rich if you own a building and if you own property, you have a company, you're rich. No, there are a lot of people who are not rich who own property. It's, it, please let that misconception leave your head because the money that, they, that, that the building creates could be gone from the lawsuit, from somebody tripping and falling. Just like that is gone, the building is gone, right? So she said that, the lawyer told her not to add me to the operating agreement because it would affect me if they got sued, which they are already in a lawsuit, two of them, right? So I'm like, I'm like uh-huh, I'm like, okay. So she doesn't want to give me the operating agreement for it. She doesn't want to change the operating agreement. And she was all fine. So my issue with that is, Operating agreements are very easy and simple to change. As you can see, it takes three days. You just have to change the paperwork and you're fine. So I was under the assumption that, hey, I could just sign it or get it changed, sign my name, send it to them, have everything be fine, and then change it back to whatever you want to change it to. Maybe you have more percentage. Maybe they, you, you, it goes into nothing. Whoever you want to split it, put it back in. But you can't put it in my dad's name because he's not here. Um... And you just let it go at that. I wonder if that's anything to do with it. I didn't even think about that. It's as far. What are you thinking about it? I mean, like the fact that it would then remove your dad's name from entirely. Yeah. Because they can't put it back on. Right. But I mean, I don't know what benefit they would have because he's no longer here. That's what I was thinking. If they are going to try in some in some way, use that to like avoid paying somehow. Like, oh, he's not here, so he can't cover the extra that's what i'm that's the only thing i think of right now it's like oh well the 25 percent that he would pay for this lawsuit he's not here so he can't pay or something like that but that doesn't make it doesn't make sense but that's the only thing i can think of if it's in some way him being on it saves them money that's i'm trying to figure out how would that work so so okay pretty much so that so that's what i was thinking i could just sign it send it to them take my name off send it back now she's very adamant about me not being on there and when I talk to her about it, there's not a real solid reason. Because like I said, this is how I always know somebody is lying. If I present a problem, a solution to your problem and you're like, well, what, well, I have a problem with this. And it's like, then that's not really what your problem Your problem is never going to be solved if you don't tell me what your problem is. Because I'm, I'm chasing Fannie Mae through the dark. I don't know what your problem I'm assuming your problem is you want to have more money. I give you my money and you're unhappy. I'm like, okay, I'm assuming your problem is you want a car. I give you a car, you're unhappy. You tell me you want to have more camera equipment. I give you that, you're unhappy. I'm like, obviously, what you're telling me is not true. Because if I give you only thing that make you happy and then I make you happy, these you are lying. That's what it is. So I have to figure out in a situation, what is the actual reason that she's saying no? If I had to guess, if I had to guess, this is just my theory. My theory is this. If I'm added to the operating agreement, it's now legalized that I have a share and it's legalized that I can actually make movements within the court system as to what happens with the building. And I don't believe that they want me to have that kind of ability to do that. And that's why I'm stuck. Well, I'm out of the whole uh, paperwork. That's what I think. Um, I can't verify that or confirm that. But that's what I believe it is. However, I feel like everything was fine until that happened. And I also feel like this is these are things that you should say because if I'm trying to solve these problems and your problem is, well, Niles, we feel like if you get on an operating agreement, you are gonna sell the house and you're gonna tell it that we had to pay you two thousand dollars a month and we don't want that. Cause then it's like, okay, if that's your real problem, got you. 
then I just won't I just won't be on it and I can go about my business some other way. But if you're telling me that it's the lawsuit, I'm like, oh, listen, I could just switch that, put them back up. And you're like, no, 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 that, mm -mm, that's not going to work. I'm like, but why? But why is it not going to work? It's just because it's not. When I start hearing stuff like that, when I start hearing things like, well, it's just because it's not. I'm like, yeah, you're lying. Like you're, you're lying because you're, you're telling me, you're not giving me a reason. You're just saying it's not. And this honestly happened on the phone too, where my sister was like, I just feel like you're marketing I don't, I can't, I think it's so funny. Somebody who claims to be as smart as she is going to talk about some, I'm just lost. I can't, I can't put into words. I just feel like you're marketing right now. And I just can't, I just, I don't like it. I'm like, what? What the fuck does that even mean? What are you talking about? What the fuck does that mean? You t the fact that I am presenting an idea that makes sense is like, nope, Donovan, you're, you're a swindler. You are a Carl, what is it? What is a snake oil salesman? You are a liar. You cannot make sense, Donovan or Niles, because you don't have a career. You can't do it. You just can't do it. So, that's what I believe um, as far as the operating agreement. So that's why I'm like, is she really helping me or not? I can't really say because it's like, it's technically supposed to be in my name already either way. So I don't really know about that. Um, but I'm going on a list of people. I'm like, we don't talk. Nobody helps me out at all. And on top of the fact that I remember my sister even said to me, we haven't talked for a while one time and we finally spoke and then she goes, uh, I think she said she helped me out with something. And I'm like, you talking about my paper in college? You talking about when I actually did look over my paper when I was 19? That was seven years ago. Like we haven't, we don't, what do you, what, like, I don't understand what you're talking about. Then she goes, and if you need help with anything, this is before, I mean, a couple years ago, maybe been two years, maybe since I've been here. If you need help with anything, I got you. But just don't ask for money. And I'm like, so what if I need money though? Like what? Because I'm in my head. You have to understand. I have an interview with my, with my sister on here too. In my opinion, that's what real family. They have two sisters. I have one sister who I will do anything for. Like it don't matter what it is. She asked me to do something. I'm like, yo, I what you need? I can, I got you. What you want me? Well, within reason. Because I'm not. I mean, if she really needs something, I will do it. But if I'm thinking about like she asked me, huh? No, no, I'm going to say, like, what if she says, like, I need you to come? I mean, I would do that. I help, help my mom with her campaign. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I would do it and I because I've done it, but I don't want to do it. And I'm like, at, at some point, I'm going to be like, you can't act that every day. I'm not going to do it every day. But if my sister's like, look, now, nah, Donovan, this is what I need from you. I'm like, I got you. And you can, you can, I can guarantee when I start making a lot of money, she's going to be the first person. I'm like, what do you want? You want to be pay off your school loan? I buy you a car, your mortgage, anything you want, I'm paying it off. You know why? Because she has supported me for my entire life. To me, that's what family is. If I go to her, I say, hey, Nephi, I need $2,000. She's going to be like, two things. She's going to say, for what? And I'm going to say, for this. By the time I finish talking to her, she already sent me the money. She goes, when are you going to pay me back? Text me when you're going to pay me back. That's it. And that's, that would be like, the if I, that, that will happen if I don't ask her for money for a long time. If I'm in the process of borrowing money, she'll just send me money. I'll be like, hey, can you send me $5,000? She'll send it to me. She'll just send me the money. And I always pay her back. And I make sure that I pay her back because I'm like, I don't want to um, break that trust that I have with her as far as me being a credible person, right? So you telling me, understand how I go from that to, hey, yeah, you need anything? I got you. Don't ask for no money, though. And you know what? And now here's the other thing, too, with my sister. This is why I respect nephew so much is because she'll say to my face i'm not gonna give you the money either one i don't have it or two I over, i'm over leveraged like i'm not gonna just lend you that much money to just for whatever and i respect that i respect the fact that she will say you know what right now i don't got it if i did i would give it to you and when she does have it she gives it to me and it's not a whole craziness to go through and then you're telling me i go from that to the other person who's shouting family 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 and they words out their mouth say listen if you need help, I got you, but just don't ask for no money, though. Just don't ask for no money or anything like that. Then you're going to try and disrespect me by talking about some, I have a career, I don't want to be shady. And I'm like, yo, like I said, it's so crazy that, like, the contrast between one sister and the other sister, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And then for the other sister to feel like, oh, I'm doing so much, I'm like, you are doing nothing. Like, this is, I think I told this before, I'm like, yo, we don't talk and I have been perfectly fine not talking to you for years. And this other thing, too. She had blocked me on Twitter a while ago. And I'm like, I asked, like, what was that about? 
well, you know, I felt like you were going through some things at the time, so I didn't really want to see what you was going through, so I blocked you. I'm like, what? My, that's some, you got, y'all got to understand, like, because this is why, it's weird stuff like that that bothers me. I'm going to tell you why that bothers me. I'm trying to think of the, one of them, like, evil villain characters that's, like, always doing shit, but they never win. There's, there's a character in a, in a cartoon where it's like, he's always, it's like, like Doofus not like Doofusmurts. Think of like a character where he's always trying to do something and they don't even notice him. They, like, he was like, he'll be trying to like steal something and they just don't even see because he's so bad at it. Yeah, but he be, but he be, but he'll be like about to do something crazy. I'm talking about there's a character I can't think of who it is. It's almost like Plankton in a sense, but he kind of does stuff too. Where it's almost like I'm gonna steal the Krabby Patty formula, but he falls down the stairs out the door, and you like, and you just kind of like, what the fuck was that? Like, did somebody try to steal from us? That's what that was, and that's why it annoyed me because I'm like, how you block me on Twitter for some shit that don't even like that was your that was your thing to me? Oh, I'm gonna block you. So I'm like, that that don't affect me. So the reason why I'm saying that is because I'm like, the fact that you were covertly trying to take shots at me by blocking me, which is so insignificant, is like, what? Kind, instead of calling me and being like, hey, yeah, what, what are you going through? What's happening right now? Like, you tweeted some crazy shit. Like, do you want to talk? You want me to, like, what's, go, what's good with you? That's, and that's, oh, that's this one. That's my problem. That's what that's gonna say. And it's, there are so many things like this from her. And then for her to now come on here talk about some family, family, family. She don't talk to nobody in the family. She don't talk to no one. She don't care about no one in the family. And now it's, why am I so selfish? Why am I so greedy? And like I said, here's what it, comes, here's what it boils down to. I believe it boils down to the fact that she wanted to, a couple things. I think that she wants money from the Airbnb and she feels like I'm going to in some way profit more than her. And she doesn't like that. Maybe because I don't have a career and I'm doing fine for myself. That could be it. I don't know what the reason is. You know why? Because people don't tell me the reason. They just uh, they give me lies and they expect me to be like, damn, that's crazy. Oh, man. Wow. I'm going to try and change that, even though it's a lie. So, like I said, I'm just, every, every, listen, y'all, 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 it's on, I have an episode, like I said, with my sister on here. Y'all don't, y'all do not understand how much I care for my sister. Like, y'all don't, y'all, I can't Listen, I'm telling you right now, there are no amount of words that I can come up with that express what I would do for my sister. Like, not not Jasmine, Nephi. Like, it, you you can't, I can't put it into words. Like, it, it's, it's just beyond measure. And like I said, to me, that's support, that's family. That's how I look at family, stuff like that. Um, so the conversation pretty much ended like this. It was... They feel like they feel like I should give some of the money to the family. And this is my assumption. They didn't say this, but I feel like they want to put me. Oh, they didn't say they put me on a salary. And I'm like, I don't know how much they think I'm going to do this for. Like, I have other things that I'm doing and I'm not going to spend my time on that for the, for a low amount of money. Now, my nephew said to me, she was like, listen, you should probably do it for the experience. If you're going to start an Airbnb somewhere else, this will be helpful to you. And I'm like, yes. I agree. I understand. So I'm just kind of like weighing that. Like, do I really want to do? And this is another thing to it before, like, before I move on. Th- if anybody who knows me or has ex- been around me or experienced me in any way or sort of sort like that, this is why I do like to do things by myself. And I don't like to deal with other people for this reason, because I will come forward as a genuine person. and I'm like, hey, let's try and do this. And then it turns into this debacle. And I'm like, you know what? This happens too many times. I just like, you know what? I'll do it myself. Like, I don't, I, there are like, there was like three or four people where I'm like, okay, I know I can rock with you. I can rock with you. But I'm like, I will rather, I will rather not have them have the building. I, if they said to me, you know what, Niles, we're not giving you the building. You're not going to, you can't use it or nothing like that. I wouldn't even be hurt. I'd be like, fine. I'm perfectly fine without it. I don't need it. I, even though my sister believes that the only reason I'm doing it is because I need the money. I'm about to be homeless if I don't have this money. She, that's what she feels like. And it's, it's, I'm just, it's a money grab for me. That's what she thinks. Yeah, this is this is why I feel like I would rather do everything by myself so that I don't have to deal with people not trusting me. Because I'm like, bruh, it's so weird that I will always come in as like, hey, I'm going to be forthcoming with everything I'm doing. And then somehow that always turns into like, nah, I don't trust you. I'm like, what? I'm like, 
what does that even mean? Like, what are you talking about? Like, even with the phone call with with the with the message from uh my with the my ex in the last last week's episode, I'm like, oh, what's the address? Well, I can't send that to you because you're gonna steal it. I'm like, what are you? I'm like, what are you talking about? So, I said that's that. Uh, the conclusion on that would be that I am going to write a proposal for them to let them to have an idea of what they want to do for the building. Um, so I actually have a funny idea where I'm going to, that thing's going to be hilarious because everybody's talking about some, uh, family, family, family cushion, cushion for the place. Right. So I'm a, one of the proposals I'm going to present is that whatever money that I make from the Airbnb, I, and I had to have to put towards the building outside of the rent that I have to pay. I am going to, everybody has to pay the same amount of money. So if y'all want me to pay $1,500 a month for the money I make from Airbnb, that means I got to pay it. My aunt got to pay it. My cousin, my sister, two of my uncles. Everybody come put up $1,500. Now we're talking about a cushion. If everybody a month is putting up $1,500 a month, that's a cushion. That's three, six. That's like $7,500 every single month. That's a, that's a cushion for something to actually happen. I guarantee you they're going to be like... Yeah, we don't. We didn't want to. We just wanted you not to make the money, and we wanted to make sure that you put the money up. But we don't want to put any of the money up. It's ridiculous. Like I said, there's more stuff in that convo. I'm thinking about shit was just crazy. It's just I she took my sister told me I got money. Yeah, if I need put up money, I put up money. And I'm like, you're not putting up no money. You're not gonna. You're not putting up money for the for the building. You know you're not. So whatever. Um. So. A couple of things. Uh, I want to get to for the uh, for the podcast. Because <laughs> like I said that was. I was heated. I was heated. Very heated. And this is an ongoing story. So there will be more of this. Um, I just think that it sucks because I was under the impression it's just be a seamless thing. We're like, okay, you have a unit. Here you go. Now take it over. Do your thing. Just go about. Do whatever you want to do. It's not turned into that. Um, so like I said, and I, like I said earlier, I guarantee if I don't do it, nobody will. So um, nobody talks about the fact uh, about nobody considers the possibility that you might not make as much money. Right, exactly. Everybody's like, you're going to make all this money. Because like I said, the hypothetical, we were like, you can make four or $5,000 a month. They were like, Phew. and as soon as I said the m- amount of money you can make a month, everybody was like chomping at the bitch like, what? what, what, what? You can make how much? And you're only going to give us two? That's not enough. I'm like, what the fuck are y'all talking about? Because you're already making two now anyways. How is it not enough now? How How is what you're already getting and what you're charging not enough? That's what you wanted. That's what you chose to get. You want 2000 Whatever. Like I said, it's an ongoing story. So we're going to find out what happens. Um, but I guarantee, I present that idea that nobody's going to want to do it. If I present the idea that somebody else has to go there every single day or whatever, however much you have to go there to do, nobody nobody is going to do anything except put up the initial funds. That's it. That's what anybody's going to do. That's it. That's the only thing. So, you know, there's that. Um, I'm going to put that, put the, put, the, put the dishwasher one in the, uh, in the Donovan's questions. I think that's Donovan's questions. Um, so, uh, I am finally receiving unemployment is a very nice check. Uh, you know, uh, I would like to say that I am, uh, it goes above that. And the Donovan's questions. I would like to say that I'm very resourceful. Uh, I want to thank my girlfriend for putting me on to this unemployment thing because right now I'm receiving about $700 a week, like something close to 700 and it's, uh, that's about a hundred dollars a day for for unemployment, and I'm still supposed to get I'm still supposed to get back unemployment about eighteen k. I still have money set up for my credit cards. I'm still waiting for George. Still waiting for AJ. Melissa has money set up. She gets her unemployment, so that's four hundred dollars a week. That's eleven hundred dollars we making a week. That's forty four hundred dollars we making a month. Listen, we doing just fine. Like we tell, somehow, some way, I don't know how we got. I mean, listen, if I'm, if I'm being honest. For if we're being completely honest. We've been making decisions to get to this point. It's not like it's an accident. Some of the stuff, and I can't even say it's an accident because we could have blown the money on so many other things. We could have gotten a MacBook. We could have got a new new television. We could have moved to another place to rent. We could have spent money on stuff. We could have went travel. We could have blown the money if we really wanted to. It's not hard to do it. But we've been investing in ourselves and in the money and in the, the business, the bamboo project, and everything for the last couple of years, honestly. And it's all just starting to culminate at the right time. So that's kind of how I look at it. You know, system. No, so I'm just like, it's it's that we're about to be making forty four hundred dollars a month from at our house doing the bamboo project, and I think that is so crazy because yes, unemployment, but there was a time 
where we were making no money from f- while we were at home. We were like kind of struggling. Like, damn, this is like, how are we going to figure this out? Um, so I so said, right now we're about getting $100 a day on unemployment. Um, about to flip this house. Hopefully we have all the funds that we were trying to procure. Uh, we close tomorrow. So we going, we'll be going to Philadelphia tomorrow to close. That's the plan. Um, we have the money, everything that we need. The only problem that we're waiting for right now, the only challenge we have is that the lender themselves uh, has, has not been in contact with the title company. And what that means is that the title company acts as an attorney. So they're supposed to process the payments and everything else in the middle of the transaction. And for whatever reason, they haven't been in contact. To, we have not been in contact with each other. So because I've not been in contact, I'm not, how, I'm not too sure how we will close tomorrow unless they figure that out. Um, I think right now the only thing that they asked me for to us I got today, they want to see more pictures of the operating agreement um, because I sent them the pictures of where I signed and where my name is, but I guess they want the other pages, which doesn't make any sense to me because nothing really on them. But once I send that, I think we should be good. I pay for the insurance today. Uh, Melissa will finally have her dream of me driving her around. Melissa has wanted this for years. She has been praying to God that one day I will be able to, she will sit in the side passenger seat and look over and my hand will be in a steering wheel and her hair will be floating in the wind. And I'll be looking down the road and she was like, oh my God, her dream will finally be fulfilled. So we will be renting a car, some hoopty or something, probably like a Toyota, some Prius or some shit like that. Um, and we'll go over there tomorrow. And honestly, this is funny. This is my first time of ever renting a car in my life. So I don't even know what to expect. I don't know how much to pay. I don't know what they're going to ask. I don't know any of that stuff. I've never rented a car in my life. So we're going to see how that goes. Uh, PayPal, uh, money came through because that was the whole thing. Um, they were like holding up the money and it was just, it was a lot. But here we are. The money has come through. We have been paypal and everything should be going well. Uh, on to life, up, I mean to the episode playback. Ooh, this is gonna be this. This is a nice lengthy one for you guys today. This is this go. This is a throwback to like five months ago. We were doing three hour podcast. Mm-hmm. Listen, I could listen. To y'all. I, said, I could go. That's why I have a podcast. I could go. Um. So last week again, there was no audio after like th- was it twenty minutes in, thirty minutes in? What was it? Twenty. Bruh, I'm telling. you, Listen. All right. Listen. Listen. I, that's fine. I, if y'all want to wait for a whole week to find this is audio, that's fine. Y'all don't want to tell me? That's fine. Okay, fine. I get it. I understand. I'm going to just, I'll figure it out the next week. And then that's what everybody's going to have to get. Unless somebody want to tell me, hey, Donovan, should not, you know. The only reason I figured it out was because Melissa would listen to the podcast. Shout out to her. Because now, like I said, the podcast, even this morning I listen to it. I'm like, yo, this shit, this shit be slapping. Like, the podcast really be slapping when I listen to it. Um, Like, this shit really slap. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold you. I'm not going to hold you. Right? The intro, the new intro that we got now, when I hear that shit, oh my God. I'm like, bruh, that shit is fire, fire. So I'm like, yeah, that shit just, I can't even, like, this shit just be fire. Um, yes, yeah, so but no audio, that shit was crazy. The thumbnail of last week, um, what was the thumbnail? I feel like it got a lot of people riled up. Oh, I think I said women love to be cheated on. Is that what I said? No, no, it was w- women hate faithful men. That was it. People wasn't fuck. People was people was like, what, what, what? I love a faithful man. How dare you? People was definitely uh, and again they painted in a bunch up in arms about that one. Um, and I was gonna talk about it today, but you know I'm gonna talk about it next week. I might touch on it a little bit, but not too much. Um, so I think that's kind of funny. Uh, so what I've been working on, I do not know how much I did it today, but. Melissa listened to the podcast and she felt like I was slurring my words. Now, <laughs> what, uh, today? Mm-hmm. Okay. So it happened today, right? So my theory is that when I say words that have TH or that start, that start with TH, I do the D sound like duh instead of the, the. So now what I'm trying to do is I want to start saying the instead of the. That's my goal. Um, because... When I do that, it it just makes the whole word sound like one sentence. So I'm trying to articulate and enunciate to have replaced that D with the TH, with the, with replace that D with, you know, I'm trying to get on that. Maybe it's my gap. 
Maybe when I get all my, my teeth fixed, maybe I'll fix that. Who knows? Um, I want to I want to say I'm so happy that I didn't have to sniffle too much today. I don't know how that happened. You know what's crazy? So I did change one thing today, and I don't know if that is what caused this. Because I, I don't feel like I had my nose is not really clogged. I'm able to inhale. Yeah, for yeah, somewhat. Um, but I wiped them. I wiped the headphones off. And I've never. I was holding them today. And I'm like, it's kind of some dust on here. And I'm like, wait a minute. If there's dust. There could be cat hair on here too. I'm like. I've wiped it since Kitty hasn't been here. Okay. Before. Okay. See, I, I was like, nah. I was like, this is definitely it. So that's the only thing I changed. But I definitely feel like my nose is better. Maybe a farther from the mic. Maybe because you changed the the little cushion thing here. I don't know. But my nose is a lot better because when I was inhaling before, oh my gosh, like I was gargling water. Like it just sound like like it just sound terrible. I just sound like. I'm like, Donovan, stop doing that. Like, I would listen to it like, why are you doing that? That shit sounds crazy. Whatever you're trying to do, it's not working. <laughs> Just stop doing that. Um, I did it today a little bit. Turning from the mic when I burp, bro. I, that, whew. I, I, mean, I was thinking like, oh, you know, maybe it's going to be like sexy. Like, oh, you know, he's a man. Oh, you thought and he that. And he burped and it was so sexy. He was like, excuse me. That's what I thought, right? No, I felt, I sound like I was dying. I'm, it sounds lo- It sounds so disgusting. It's like, you hear it in the rumblings of my stomach and my chest, and then it comes out my throat, and it's just like, it's crazy. It's not, and then it sounds like I'm choking on the burp. So it just sounds like it's a bad thing happening, honestly. So I uh, apologize to you guys for that. I'm going to make sure that I turn my head when I have to uh, flashlight from my mouth, because obviously that shit is crazy. Um, the timing when I inhale is off. Got to work on that. So, you know, I'm trying to fade that out. Um, and I wanted to address, can you scroll up? I wanted to address, I said something about the business, about the business thing, right? Um, I said that if you think telling me a business is going to make you lose it, um, then you are bugging. That's what I said last week. Then what I meant by that is You shouldn't be running your business if you feel like if I tell somebody else, they can just take it and do it what I can do. That either means one, your business is not a good business or two, you shouldn't be in charge of the business. Because if you come to me and say, hey, Donovan, I'm going to print some stuff on T-shirts and you tell me that and I'm like, all right, sure. You should be able to be creative enough to create more things that will make money. If you can only make one design, that one design makes a lot of money, and I take it and print something on it, then you shouldn't really run the business either way. Because all that means is that once you sell out of this shirt, you will not have any more clothes. So therefore, you are not really a business person. You just had a good idea. That's it. That's it. And you. And then it's the other thing, too, about running a business with people who do not run businesses do not understand. Every single person in this world, every person that exists in this world has multiple million dollar ideas, multiple Every single person, right? However, the difference is that you have to execute on those ideas to become a millionaire. So if you think that you're going to tell me, imagine if somebody came to me right now and was like, Donovan, I have a great idea. We should, you should create a company where people rent mattresses from somebody's apartment. I'll be like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, what are you talking? That doesn't make any, what do you, who is going to come to another state and sleep on a random person's mattress. That's crazy. I'm not the person to tell that to. Because I can't. I At the time. Probably even now. I don't know who to bring that to. Who do I tell that to? Who do I go and say. Hey listen. Listen guy. Listen. Let's, let's do this thing. Right. So. The reason I still. Reiterate this again. If you are young. And you feel like. Because here's the thing. If you feel like. Tell somebody else. You don't want to tell somebody else. Your business idea. You shouldn't run the business. You should be very open to talking about your business uh, because the intellectual property should be you. Or you should have something that you created, like you actually created something that other people can't. And then if you created it, it's yours. You, you created it. Um, so this actually comes from uh, when I was running a business with uh, Hunter before we ran into this situation. I, I vaguely remember it might have been me that was doing it. It was one of us. It probably, it might have been me. I might have been the one that they didn't want to talk about the business. I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to take my business because you might steal it. It probably was me. Um, and it's just, like I said, it's stupid because it's like, if I bring the idea to you, you it's not like you just automatically make it happen. So, you know, that's my thing. Um, uh, something about Melissa. It was something about Melissa. Not so. Oh, oh, about fucking other girls. That's what it was. So, Melissa, I had said that Melissa would ask me, do I want to fuck them? 
um, and I had said yes, the proper answer I would I feel like she normally asks me that, and I feel like I would say no, but I would. Like I don't want to. I don't not. I'm not trying to fuck them, but I mean, would I still fuck them? Sure, of course. Um, I think that was more accurate. And then finishing my sentences is something I need to work on. Um, still working on that. Still a little bit hard. Damn, maybe it's a time thing. Now my nose is about to. So what? Something I'm gonna do a little bit different this week. This is the last. Uh, before we wrap this up, I'm going to present Donovan's question. And next week, I am going to bring up exactly why this was a question. Donovan's question for the week. Would you? Take the drain plug from your bathtub and put that in the dishwasher to wash it. Okay, here's a question again. In your bathtub, there is a drain. There's a plug in the drain. Would you take that and put that in the dishwasher? That's my question. Um, like I said, I'm not going to do today's topics because we're already like an hour and 30 min, minutes in. So I'm just going to... Please comment below the answer to your question. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we're very curious to see uh, what you... And I, guess I, will t- I will explain next week as to why this was a conversation that we were having in the house. Um, and why I asked this question to the family on the uh, on the podcast. Um, but I think that... Uh, I think that's, that's a good episode for today. It's very it's definitely long. It says 605. That's crazy. Um, can you scroll up? So I'm actually, I've been considering it from today. I am going to come up with a new outro also. Um, I'm not sure what, how, I don't even have an idea of what it will sound like, what it will be, but I definitely think the outro I currently have, I'm like, eh, it's outdated. We have chapter two of the story now. Like chapter two is different than chapter one. Like we gotta be, we upgrading. Listen, compound interest. Um, but we will be back here next week on Tuesday. Listen, every Tuesday we air True in the Podcast every Tuesday. If you want to come on, chat it up. Maybe you think I'm saying some wild shit. you like, no, Donovan be bugging. I'm going to tell him why he's wrong. Pull up. Pull up to the podcast. Or pull up on Zoom. We can do Zoom. We got a new laptop. We can do Zoom too. Uh, if you have not already, go check out our social medias. Mine is Donovan Gray. D-O-N-I-V-A-N-G-R-A-Y. And then you have the beautiful, phenomenal, amazing Anita Byrne. A-N-E-T-A. B U R N. We currently have six different projects. All right. We have the food project. We have the clothing project. We have the music project. We have the fitness project. We have the sports project. And we have the Bamboo Project podcast, which you just finished listening to right now. Before we tap out, right? I actually want to say, I think this is actually really funny. Uh, my beautiful, phenomenal girlfriend's name is Melissa. It's not Anita. <laughs> so I just want to put that out there for anybody who was under the assumption that her name was not um, um, Mel- it's, a, it's not Anita. It's Melissa. I just think it's funny because people uh, will, will call her Anita. I think that's really funny. Um, but it's Melissa. You know what it is. Hashtag Baby Park 2021. You know the vibes going up all year. And with that being said, Bamboo Project out. <laughs>